This is the Chasing the Tide Saltwater segment on the Pal and Fin Network. I'm your host, Dustin Nichols. Come along for the saltwater shenanigans. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Dustin Nichols with Chasing the Tide Saltwater segment here on the Pal and Fin Podcast Network. Tonight, we've got a special guest. we got my tournament partner that I fished uh, saltwater um, events with. Uh, Michael Fiorenza in the house tonight. What's up, man? What's going on, brother? How goes it? It's going. It's going. Been, uh, you know, getting getting done, finished up with the holidays and then winding up, starting this new year out. And then it's just seeing all these damn tournament schedules popping up. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's about to be a busy year. That's all I'm going to say. We're going to get into that a little later. Uh, but first off, you know, as with any guests, we start to show off with, uh, you know, what, what got you into fishing, you know, and how, how long you've been doing that right now. So I didn't fish much growing up as a kid because I was always involved in other stuff and there wasn't a lot of, uh, there wasn't a lot of people that I knew that fished. Uh, I got involved when my oldest son started in Cub Scouts and said, I want to go fishing. And we started fishing at local ponds here in the woodlands, uh, fishing for bass. And then you get, start developing that and you say, Hey, I got to get off the bank. <laughs> so yeah. well, kayak- <laughs> rewind <laughs> hey uh this guy grew up in new jersey <laughs> so, so that, that's that's probably why he didn't start no i don't know i can tell he's from there so you know I can, no i just cut in on you real quick but yeah you once you moved over to texas and stuff y'all you, you jumped on in huh correct correct and uh, <laughs> once you get off the bank the easiest cheapest way to do it is a kayak and uh it has kind of exploded from there um so it's been it started with bass we we'll started largemouth bass and that turned into i went out on a trip uh i went on a charity tournament on a boat and hooked my first redfish and said oh um these things pull a lot a lot harder than bass <laughs> so we're gonna go chase these things Roots. yeah and that's where uh that's where you and i met we had, we met at a, a association right. of builders and contractors tournament in uh in port o'connor um right. what three years ago yeah correct uh yeah we met at, we met at a tournament you know chasing some fish <laughs> Yeah, man. So yeah, that uh, once you once you jumped in a kayak, it was all over. It's all over but a crime, man. It's like the ease of access. You know, I, I probably sound like a broken record um, every episode. Oh, it's just the ease of access. But but for real, that's that's what's great about kayaking, kayak fishing in general, is that you can just load up in the back of the truck and go dump off the side of the road somewhere and just jump in. Um, nothing else like it. Uh, and then that close to the action, being that close and seeing that, you know. That's what we're gonna get in with you about this this shallow water redfish stuff, man. So uh, we're gonna jump on into that. So we'll get into your um, your favorite species to target. So um, go ahead and jump on in there. Love redfish, absolutely love redfish. Uh, I enjoy shallow redfish. I enjoy I'll fish over the reef. I'll fish deep, but I like being way back in in the skinny water, sneaking up on them and basically dropping a lure on their head. Um, that's that's what I I really enjoy. I yeah, love sight, sight casting. You know, seeing them, seeing the wakes pushing, seeing them blowing up, seeing the shrimp scattering, or or actually the water's clear enough. You're seeing the fish and actually putting it in her face. So uh, you know, like this time of year, um, you know, the tips and tactics. You know, in general for redfish, you know, what are some that you might you know pass along to somebody that might just be starting out? Um, this is what you need. You need a log book. Okay. Ah. Every time I go out, I take notes. I have to take notes on the day, weather conditions, where they were, what was going on. And over time, over the last couple of years, I've built up, I've built up a bunch of notes. Uh, I go through a new notebook every year and I kind of transfer it down and consolidate it. Um, they're going to be deeper and they're going to be slow right now as yeah. the fronts come through here in Texas. We, you know, you get the, it's, 40 degrees today it'll be 70 degrees tomorrow then it'll be 30 degrees the next day and yeah. 80 degrees two days later flop so, back and forth real uh, quick these fish go deep shallow deep shallow or they just stay in a pool and just lay on the bottom they just and get stuck that's Sometimes, right they do. that's what say we get a big frontal <laughs> passage you got uh strong anything with the north and west in it west winds blow the water out you really can't get a, a high tide back in there and yeah. um 
you know, the fish get stuck in little ponds in the marsh, little pools in the marsh and can't get out. And they're back there just thrashing the bait. I think you had something like that happen last weekend. Um, last you weekend. Wanna, uh, it, it's not for the faint of heart going and, and, and uh, <laughs> trudging through the, the waist deep mud and dragging a kayak, you know, 50 to 75 yards to get back in a foot deep pool that's only about 200 yards you know, long and wide, and but there's redfish like crazy in there, so the reward is well worth it. <laughs> they they stack up in those little, like you know, we you know you've seen it. We, yeah. They get into this. It's basically fishing in a swimming pool. Pretty and much. Yeah. You've got it. The water source in and out is cut off, so it's just bait and redfish in this shallow water. I did last weekend. I got stuck in the mud. Um, I had to drag about 25, 30 yards in, and then I was chasing a school and misjudged my time and tide and. Got back out to the channel and went, oh, no, there's no water. And <laughs> it, it was quite a long drag back out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, here in Texas, even though we don't deal with tidal changes like they do on the East Coast, on the Atlantic side of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, you know, five to seven foot tide change over there, we only get, like, a one or two foot tide change normal, normally. Um, but in the winter, like I said, those strong fronts come through and they push that water out of the bay systems. Um, that's what you call, say, if you had a little higher tide running before that, um, before that front came in, those Southeast winds pushed your tide back up to normal levels and you get that super strong push that, that, that water, if you can catch it when it's still coming out of the marsh drains, you know, it's, it's the bait fish is getting flushed out with it. And those redfish are just going to stack up. That's what, uh, some people around here like to call the dump. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh, we need no. a good strong yeah. wind for the dump but, yeah yes. like uh like this morning like that, <laughs> that's that front true last, that front last night we had it was, it's been blowing it blew northwest today you know 30 plus uh, um yeah we're supposed to have a tournament today and it got canceled a bass tournament uh you can fish tomorrow and then there was also a trout tournament um speckled trout tournament that was supposed to go on today it got postponed or canceled same difference um uh, so it's like man it's it's crazy with all these these tournaments sometimes you know you got to look out for everybody you know look out for the anglers and look out for everybody's safety and all that so um we're gonna get into uh uh, you know what were you thinking when you found out that man uh, i can't get back across that channel (laughs) how deep was the mud at the time so when i was dragging in i was all the way to my crotch yeah. And uh, if you've ever gotten into a situation like that, you never let go of the kayak because yeah. you need something. I mean, the mud down here, there's no bottom to the mud down here. You just you just keep sinking. So you kind of slide the kayak through and jump up and crawl out of the mud and then slide the kayak again. And getting in wasn't, you know, I, I saw it. I expected it. I said, OK, I can get there. That's not that bad. I'm going to get a little bit dirty. When I came back out, I, you get that that moment of uh, moment of panic. We're like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it's okay. Do I go back in and try to find another way out? Do I just drag across here? Do I, you know, you got to start working that. I actually, I know two guys with airboats. One of them, Brandon, uh, from Caden Lures, and uh, another guy that I met down in that area that has an airboat down there. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm seriously considering calling in some reinforcement because this is oh, like yeah. three 300 350 yards worth of mud in order to hit any kind of floatable water <laughs> so but other than that though talk about um some of the catches you had in there oh so <laughs> so you get all it's these stupid, fish huh? that you saw the video i, I, I yeah. got the video posted um we were i was sight casting bull redfish for 45 minutes i mean it was just one after another after another um, that's 30 inch plus redfish people <laughs> we're listening in a bull is uh i consider it 30 inches or 30 inches yeah, the, the smallest yeah. one i got i posted and it was 29 and a half inches everything was from 29 to 32 and they were just stacked up back there yeah. um there is a channel way back in that marsh and, and i got a i I got to stress that for wintertime fishing. There's a deep channel. So you've got the flats with reef and the reefs exposed with, with the yep. water really low, but there's a deep channel. And if you can get back into that deep channel, they stack up down there and get on the bottom. Um, I, in all honesty, to tell you the truth, the best thing, we throw a lot of paddle tails, throw a lot of crankbaits, yep. throw a lot of, you know, a deep diving crankbait. Um, but I've been playing around in those channels with the, uh, with these, 
I don't know if you can see it. The Grande Bass yeah. air tail rattlers. The air tail. On yeah, a, looked like a, a sand eel. <laughs> on a, 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 a shaky head. Yeah. Uh-huh. And just send that quarter inch shaky head down at a bottom and slow drag, and they absolutely hammer it. I think it's a sand eel. I think it's a sand eel. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah, I've called well, him on a Ned rig. I've called trout on a that's Ned right, rig. Ned rigs. Yep. Yeah, it's it's crazy how you can transition some of them baits from from yep. uh, fresh water into salt water, and especially in the in the summer when the tides are running higher and you're getting some grass buildup and all that. I'm throwing popping frog, a white a white ribbit buzz to, buzz toad, or or like a uh, a booyah popping pack crasher in like all white and silver, and they them redfish suck it up. Uh, I call, Texas I call, rig. I've called trout on them too. Texas rigging, Texas rigging cross and creature baits. Yeah, yeah I've They're called them like that. Throw them into the sand pockets. <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Done that too. But yeah, this time of year, you you definitely uh, you definitely slowing your presentation down after those fronts um, until you have some warmer days afterwards, and then it has a chance to heat up that shell and that darker mud, um, push that water temp up, and and, and help 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 uh, activate those fish to feed. Um, you know, and I also, you know, this time of year, I, I know um, for salooner periods, it does play a key role in the, the in for those feeding periods. Um, you know, those fish could be, you know, just lethargic and waiting. And then that sun comes out for three, four hours in the morning. And then that moonrise or that moon's overhead or underfoot in the middle of the day. It's like somebody flipped they're, a switch. They're, they're going to turn on. It's going <laughs> to it's going to flip a switch yeah. on them, flip that script, man. It's going to get them going. Mm-hmm. Uh so it's, it's, it's cool to see that happen, too, when you can be on the water and do that. You know, that's the same thing goes for, you know, this time of year. Uh, if I can get on the water, excuse me here. <coughs> if I can get on the water in the late evening, the last yeah. two hours of daylight, and if there happens to be a, a, a lunar period in that last two to three hours of, of daylight into, into when it starts getting dark, Cause that's your warmest part of the day. That sun's been shining all day. That water's warmed up. That shallow water might be a little, you know, two to three degrees warmer. Um, man, that's where them big single, them single mature trout will be coming up there, stalking, looking for mullet up there. Uh, and that, man, that's a prime time for this year. This time of the year is to, you, you know, a lot of people, you know, fill that water and be like, oh, it's too cold. Nah, it ain't too cold. You get on up there. That water's <laughs> in. That water's in the upper fifties. Them fish are gonna be shallow in the evenings. Man, when we were uh, when we went out and, and and you were jacking big trout right in front of me, I pull out a little <laughs> tiny trout. You're pulling out 26 inches, and I'm going really. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were in a redfish tournament, and I think I caught oh, like, six trout over 24 inches, like oh, pretty much on like back to back cast, like every other cast. Do, 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 do. <laughs> it's like holy crap. And then I called it. I was like, hey, hey, watch this. I said, if they're here, it's going to be like this. Shoot. And I twitch, twitch, boom, like, oh, what happened? And then I said, hey, watch this. I said, if they're here, there's going to be another one. And then, like, shoot, 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 boom. And I just jacked it. And went like, boom, 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 boom. So, I'm, I'm yeah. pulling out, like, 14, 15-inch <laughs> trout. He's pulling 24, 26-inch trout out of the same hole yeah. right next to me. I'm well, like, we were in an online tournament, and I'd already had my – I'd already – like, you could have – a couple of those would have put you in the money, man, because yeah. I had already had my big for the year. And it, I mean, for that tournament, and I was like, oh, I got mine. I was, I'm uh, just like, shoo, shoo. man, that was fun. Even though we were looking for redfish, you know, we didn't find, we found a couple of that day. Right. Last minute heroics in a, in a bayou. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it still got bumped out the money, but it's all good. That's what it is. That's what tournament fishing is about sometimes, you know, live and you learn. Um, just, yeah, just like we were, you know, <laughs> we're getting, we talking about trout right there a little bit, but, um, you know, any tips out there, uh, tips you want to throw out for anybody that say wants to transition, um, from fresh, fresh water to salt water, somebody that's never been in the salt water before, you know, um, safety, safety, yeah. safety, safety. Uh, there's things in salt water that'll eat you. Um, you know, there's things in fresh water that'll eat you too, but there's a lot more things with teeth than salt water. Um, and always have a float plan. Always, always, always let somebody know where you're going so that you, you know, you get out there exploring new areas and chasing fish. Always have a float plan. Uh, I'm a big proponent of PFDs all the time, uh, all obviously. The time. Yep. Um, but, uh, 
gear wise, don't overthink it. it uh, if you've got quality bass gear, it'll work just fine for everything you're going to target out there inshore. Um, you know, braid, bait caster, bass rods, they all work fine. Um, you can throw bass tackle. We were just talking about throwing uh, shaky head worms and crankbaits and frogs yep. and creature baits. Chatter baits. Chatter baits. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, wake baits. Uh, top buzz, waters. Buzz, buzz baits. baits. That's right. <laughs> I've caught redfish and trout on buzz baits. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, it, it's nothing uh, wrong with dabbling in that. <laughs> absolutely. And, and, and really, it's, it's, it's about getting out there and, and figuring it out. Um, you know, fishing for bass. You know, we go go out and fish for bass, and uh, you're you're finding them deep, and you're finding structure, and you're you're working current, and you're working bait. No difference with the redfish. They're they're basically a Same big thing. orange and gold bass with a spot on its tail. Yes, red so, bass, spot tail bass. Well, that's right. the thing. You know, sometimes you might not have all that much tidal movement, but that's when you pay attention to your wind wind current breaks. Uh, Correct. Wind bl- wind blown shorelines. Um, wind, you know, flowing into a little uh, mouth of a creek that has shell and it's it's getting pushed around the, that shell and there's an ambush point. Uh, them redfish are just like trout, uh, um, trout and then just like bass or or any other predatory fish that are opportunistic feeders. They're going to be sitting right there in that ambush ambush spot, wait wait to just pounce on something that comes by. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. It's, it's it's all you know it all plays into the same same. Uh, concept of it you know it's, it's it's yeah so transitioning back and forth in bad i just say if anybody um you know likes to bass fish a lot and, and, and you are close enough to get to the salt you know two three hours away come on i'm open uh i just took a couple Absolutely. guys i just took a couple guys out uh, a couple weeks back um you know from from uh they they fish the same little club southeast texas sky bass league they fish the same tournaments tournament trail and uh, they live up around Waco. That's about three and a half hours from me. And they came down and, man, we put a smack down on, on trout, you know, 17 to 20 inch, just keeper size trout. Man, I cleaned them up and sent them on their way, sent them home with limits, bud. It was like, sweet. Great. <laughs> Great. Uh, because they you wanted, know, they want some back. food. Yeah, they wanted some food to eat. They want some trout to take home. And we said, all right, we can do that. Uh, I don't want to keep anything, you know, bigger than 2021. 20, Normally, I like to let the bigger ones go. Uh, let them grow, let them get uh, trophy status. Yep. So, um, you know, got them some fillets and sent them home. Had a good time. You know, once they got that bite down, there's a little deeper bite that day. Uh, you know, that's the same thing. You know, just it's, it's like fishing a Texas rig on the bottom. It's just an open jig head with a little paddle tail. So, same thing. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And now they're hooked. They'll come back. Yeah, they'll probably be, they'll be back. <laughs> you know, you know it, it, it's going to be good. So, um, you know, being that we – we enjoy the saltwater thing a lot too. You know, I do I do fish bass tournaments. It's going to be busy mm-hmm. this year. There's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, uh, as we're recording this today on, um, you know, my, this will come out the following Wednesday. This is January the 11th. Um, I have a tournament tomorrow. It was got postponed till tomorrow. Um, uh, so we'll fish one, be fishing a bass tournament tomorrow, but you know, we, we fished, we fished quite a few tournaments last year. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, uh, as a team, we, we got in a few uh, the year before, same. You know, Ooh. hopefully this year we're going to get in a few more without all this other stuff getting in the way. But <laughs> as, as we we were just reading over some of the schedule, and we're going to kind of touch on this. This is in this is in this is in Texas. I said this is like mm-hmm. crazy. I'm not even going to talk about all the local bass trails that we, <laughs> we can fish. Yes, uh, correct. Yeah. East Texas kayak fishing, Southeast Texas kayak fishing, North Texas mm-hmm. kayak fishing. Dallas, Fort Worth kayak anglers, Central Texas kayak. I mean, I could I could name a few yeah. more than that. Like, there's another two or three that I don't I know I forgot. It's like, whoa, what you want to do? You want to fish a tournament every day of the weekend and get the force? You could, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you can <the> here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, man. That's what, oh man, because I know, I know. I'm about to be busy, and I know my wife's not too happy about that. <laughs> she's got, new, she's got a new rod. She's, she's got a new rod. She's good. Nice. Sorry about <laughs> she that. She gets to go on a girl's trip. You know, that's good, too. But, you know, I got you got, you got to give and take, you know. Absolutely. Go on a family trip to 
to Tennessee or to Branson or something, New Orleans or whatever, you know, have fun, you know, do that too. So, uh, yeah. So with that, you know, last year we fished a couple of events. Um, we were talking about one of them. I, we were fishing. Uh, I got in the trout really good during the redfish tournament. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, when we had one that we, um, one of the Rudy's uh, kayak attack series, the Redfish Trail, we had a, uh, what we have, uh, about a two hour delay with thunderstorms on top of us with about 30 mile an hour winds blowing the other way. That's that's yeah. the, that's the tournament that it just is burned into the memory. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that one's burned in here. You, yeah. you broke fish off two fish off that that morning. And I know I broke one off that was 27 inches easy or 20, almost probably eight or nine pound redfish. I broke off a good one that morning on shell, and then and then it was just one of the, we we were on the fish and then then it just didn't happen. We had fish to turn in, but we just didn't have the the right ones. Correct. You know. Yeah um luck i did catch a enter all the yeah, side spot, pots i got yep. spot pot in that one with five yeah. spots which was pretty dang low yeah. <laughs> yep. you know i yep. still want some, want some money which is crazy you actually had one that had five spots too so we both had a five spot redfish actually mine was mine was a half inch shorter than yours yeah so yeah mm -hmm. yep we did that, <laughs> that was yeah we got stuck uh we had to like Ugh. beach the kayaks and go hang out and that's right. The storm came in. I was sitting in a channel and I was staked out and I was fishing a drop off to a deep channel. And I and I knew where you were. You were farther away uh, around one of the other side of the island. And the wind was blowing from my back and it just stopped. And then all of a sudden it started hitting me in the face. And I'm like, oh, this isn't going to be good. Look around. <laughs> and there's that black look around. And there's that black line. It's, it's like, like oh. a wall cloud coming right at us. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then yeah. I heard a couple of lightning bolts and some thunder, and I was like, okay, I'm, I had just called a fish, too. Like, mm -hmm. I heard it, and I paused, and he, like, he hit it when it was just sitting there, and I was like, oh, because I was throwing top water all, you know, if it's that time of year, I'm throwing top water every dang minute. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that was one of them ones, you know, where it's like, ah, uh, you know, it, it could have been a little better, you know. So, just, you know, I tell you, it could have been better, but uh, – one thing you learn from doing this is you don't give up. You don't quit. No, you don't you grind don't, until you, the last minute. Because that's what happened <laughs> with you. You kept grinding yeah. to the last minute. Yep. We were on the last stretch, right? Uh, last 115, 120 yards before the, yeah, before before the, the launch, yeah. right? And two slot redfish. 24s. <laughs> two 24s back, like two casts back, back to back. To back. Yep. Yeah. So you grind all the way to so, the end. So he, he ended up being, finishing in the top 10. I think I was 14th. Mm -hmm um there was 80 something anglers which is a good I'm, I'm okay with that i want a spot pot want a little money you want some prizes you know it was good that's about what we did last year as a team we we got seventh also place, yeah. so you know uh i'm looking forward to that one again that's uh that's ray del mar that that event's uh put on by uh fin factory and uh ack uh, yeah. austin canoe and kayak and uh through cats kayak anglers tournament series and that one is, um, I know we're, I'm going to get into that, but that one's this year. Uh, the Friday captain's meeting will be on uh, July 31st. Mm -hmm. And then the 8-1 and August 1st and 2nd will be the event. It's a back-to-back. -back. Um, you can fish either just the redfish event or you can fish an offshore event. And that's what they call it, the king of the sea, mm -hmm. king of the salt. Yep. Because it's, uh, you know, you can fish redfish one day and fish – for a kingfish, the next, and there's like ling, a ling side pot, a snapper side pot, or whatever, jack, trash fish side pot. Um, but yeah, you can fish either or. So, depending on the weather, they run it. You know, this last year, they ran the offshore on Saturday and the redfish on Sunday, and it was beautiful. I'm smacking myself in the head for not fishing the offshore division of that one. <laughs> so, I think we're going to get a chance this year. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. And then getting into that, you know, uh, you know, the IFA, they're coming back to Texas mm -hmm. this year um at first i saw port lavaca on the schedule with a tba and i was stoked that's my home waters and uh i'm not seeing that now i'm seeing a port aransas event on uh, march 31st and a corpus event on august 11th which still that's a cool event because i like that tournament because it's one red one trout kind of easing evens it out you know and then back to the redfish trails there's a uh, lone star kayak series um waiting on the well, thing we're Waiting on Mike to post some We're dates. We're waiting on Michael McMullen to post some dates. 
Uh, haven't seen the schedule to that yet. And what you got? What have you seen? Rudy's. What do you Rudy's. see on Rudy's? So Rudy's Pro Series this year. Three stops. Yeah. Uh, April 18th, 19th in Galveston. Uh, May 23rd, 24th in Aransas Pass. And, and June 6th and 7th in Matagorda. Yeah. And that's open boundaries on those, too. So you open any, yeah, any any Texas waters, as long as you can make it to that dang weigh-in. And he usually has his weigh-ins open until 6 p.m. Most yes, of the time. I like the, I like the late weigh-ins. Yeah. yeah, I do too. I push it. And this year he's and got that trout. He's got that trout tourney too. He's yeah, the, and there's a trout, trout tournament. tournament. One of them was supposed to run today, which he got canceled. And then what we got? Uh, January 25th. There's the the mat one in Matagorda Harbor. And then what? February 15th is a Corpus event. Corpus. Yep. Corpus. Which? Uh, January 25th. I can't do. That's my daughter's <laughs> birthday party. Her her. Birthday's the next day, but I'm on nights anyways, and I'll be – that Tuesday I leave to go to Seminole for the Hobie BOS, uh, the 27th. Yeah. I'll be leaving – yeah, or the 28th. Now, February 15th, uh, the Corpus event is looking pretty, pretty good. I, I think I can – I've got that No, well, no, unless there's a, a – <laughs> I think that's Fairfield for um, Southeast Texas Kayak Bass League. Nope, the 8th is Fairfield. The 25th, I mean, the, yeah, the 15th, the Corpus could be good. But I don't know if I can do tournaments three weekends in a row. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, that's one of them things. So I believe I'm going to fish that Fairfield event, not the trout tournament. <laughs> Much as I want to fish that trout tournament because yep. uh, I want to go down there and go head-to-head with old Chris Castro. <laughs> He's all, he is always on trout down He's there. He's on some good trout too. Uh, me and he, you know, he was my first guest for my first ever yep. segment. You know, so um, <laughs> I've been meaning to get down in there and get with him. Hopefully next week when I'm on my long change, I'm gonna try to try to make it down there and fish with him uh, one day. So you know, um, that's gonna be fun. You know, Ru- uh, Jeff Austin runs that those Rudy's trails. He runs the pro series. He runs the boat side too. Um, you know, and he he started out what uh, four five years ago or so with the, Coast, with the yeah, kayak, Coast kayak series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. G- yep. Gulf Coast Tournament Association. Um, got Rudy's on board sponsoring it. And they, they, they feed us, they take care of us. Uh, payouts are always plus, And then, you know, it's, it's good to go. And mm-hmm. then also last year, we, we, we didn't get a chance to fish any of them, but uh, saltwater angler magazine who, whom we both, mm-hmm. uh, we both um, uh, submit content to do, do some articles for them. Um, both of us. And uh, they they started a redfish series last year, and uh, we didn't get to do any of them. But some of our friends ended up, you know, fishing fish well. pretty well, uh, uh, team of the year, and all that kind of stuff. And um, you know, they got some dates this year. Uh, what, what you got on that? I see. Uh, I don't have all I've got is their their boat uh, their boat uh, series on their dates, and they're running from right. April all the way to all the way to October. Yeah, they're supposed to have a. a two-day pro series for boats but i think the kayak series is supposed to be one day events and i haven't seen any dates on that yet so um i believe we'll be we'll be looking out for info on that maybe mm-hmm. if i get a little info i'll pass that along on the next next few podcasts i put yeah. out okay. so oh, yeah i know i'm looking forward to fishing a couple those rudy's events with you the team events and hopefully some of those saltwater uh angler series Absolutely. and then um, there's also another series saltwater survival series it started out as a that's an event that uh, they would give everybody the same box of lures. Everybody yes. would get the same box yeah, yeah, yeah. of egret mm-hmm. baits, and everybody would have to fish with the same thing, and that's all you could fish with, which was cool. Um, I, I had a couple results in that. Um, you know, it was it's pretty cool to, to fish those that way, but as of last year, they they, they, they canceled the, the having everybody to have to have their – same uh, same lures and they they started it's just all it's open bait no live bait but all or artificial only you can use whatever artificials you want um that one kicks off on april the 11th and, and it's the redfish tournament they do have they're, they're known to have uh multiple side pots you know a flounder pot a trout pot spot pot biggest red you know all that good stuff so um the redfish is a uh what is it is it a three red stringer is it three red? Yeah, it three I want to say red it's red? three. I want to say it's three on that one. I could be wrong. I don't remember off the top of my head. I can't I remember either. Yeah, and then there's a slam side pot too. One red, one yeah. trout, one flounder. Mm-hmm. And then uh, June twenty seventh is the trout event. Mm-hmm. So that's your best uh, four trout. Yeah, and then you've got two trout in the flounder. 
Yeah, and then the flounder, yeah, November you're in, the 14th. Your you're best. in a restricted time period, so it's only yeah. two. Two, November the 14th, you got a flounder event. So there's two flounder stringer. And then they'll have, you know, they'll have a slam pot. They'll have a trout pot and a redfish pot. This and that. Yeah, that's a that's a tournament stacking up, man. <laughs> it's going to be a busy year. And that, then ain't, got, that ain't even all the... I know that you got to add in you know, even some of the online stuff. I mean, you, you're going to be doing some KBF stuff. You're going to be doing some some bass stuff. Uh, the KBF Redfish online. I mean, it, it's there's, it's all over. S, uh, San Antonio, Eugene's Trail. Oh, yeah. So San Antonio Kayak Fishing, they'll have two. Um, let me throw them dates out there while I'm looking. <laughs> I know he just posted them, so... Um, too salt, too fresh. Got too salt, too fresh, and the official dates are. Here we go. We're overlapping. Yep. Because uh, of Rudy's Trout, it's February fifteenth. This one is Lake Fayette on Fe February the fifteenth. Then he's got a March twenty eighth on Lake Corpus Christi, which I will be in Gunnersville for the KBFNC. Um, then there's five sixteen on Lake Corpus Christi, which no, not five sixteen is a saltwater event in Corpus Christi, Corpus. Yep. sponsored by Roy's. So, um, yeah, I'll most likely be at that I'll one. Yeah, out there then, too. In 7-Eleven in Rockport. Yep. For, uh, for another um, split, um, that saltwater event. I'm sure it'll be two trout and one redfish. I think he's trying to, trying to change it up a little bit. I like that. I like because every, that, you know. I get burnt out on just catching <sighs> the fish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you get, you, you, you. I think it tests you as an angler a little bit more to have to, to, catch, have, to have to catch multiple species. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, it definitely does. It definitely evens the playing field, oh, big yeah. time. Mm -hmm. It's it does, you know, and that's what I like about that one. So that one will be cool. I know then there's Texas kayak fishing, San Antonio will have an event, a um, couple of events, and then kayak fishing Texas is another group yeah. that will have. Uh, man, they got a. They got a, a pretty good schedule coming up too. I know they got a couple events with um, yeah, a couple freshwater events and a couple saltwater events too. So they, I know they got an event on Coletto, which is my home lake. So, that's cool. <laughs> so there's that's two tournaments on Coletto this year for me. Mm -hmm. There's one on Southeast Texas Kayak Bass League, which is open for motors so i'm burning up some water and heading pretty far north on that one nice. find some grass. uh most likely i found some i found some road beds the last time i fished it that i didn't even know were there i found some old road beds so i'm pretty stoked nice. on this those in the in the spring and summer months excellent see, see what happens so yeah man it looks like it's gonna be pretty dang it's a busy year. Busy year. It's a busy year this you year. Know. You know, this sport is not getting any smaller. No. Everybody's, all the big names are buying into the kayak side of stuff. As well. I mean, we're all over it. Four years ago, you barely saw anybody out. There was a handful of people here, a handful of people. And now you can't go anywhere without seeing a kayak. Yeah. Um, I see them all the time. Yeah. Well, you can't miss me. So <laughs> it's like. Man, I'm gonna have to go incognito or something and <laughs> take my wife's tr uh, truck with the my yeah. wife's SUV with the trailer. At least I can hide, you know, won't be well, able to see me where I'm fishing. One of those tournaments, uh, 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 where, where we fish, you had parked the truck, we had parked next to each other, and Alex yeah. Alex sends me a message and goes, "Where where the heck are you guys? We I just got a call that Dustin's truck is over there. <laughs> <laughs> I got her looking." They're looking for it now. Dustin's truck's over there. <laughs> hey, you you might can find my truck, but you got to know how to catch the fish. There you fish, go. You know. There you go. There you go. Which yeah, you, know, you know we we do compete with a lot of top notch anglers. Oh, I'll give it that. You know there's there, there's so many great anglers here, saltwater side to freshwater side in Texas. You know we 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 got some sticks in this state, man, and it's uh got a good group, man. It's uh you know being able to fish with you, being able to fish with. You know, Tracy Debman, Eugene Mora, uh, Eric Porter. I'm just throwing out names. Uh, Jeff Ice, Jeff Isham, freaking uh, uh, man, who's them other Hobie guys? Jason Delfres, er er Eric, Eric, Deloise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, 
Man, there's some hammers, dude. Mark Pentagraph. I know. I think he's going to Seminole, too. There's a group of us going to Seminole. Jason Willis and uh, Jeff Isham. I'm going to bunk up with them at, at Seminole. I, I got a place to stay with them. We're staying at this little lodge there. It's going to be pretty cool. Roll up there, get some pre-fishing in. Hopefully be pitching to some grass and throwing a little chatterbait, a little power fishing. Hopefully find that gonna... high driller. <laughs> oh, find that high driller, That's as right. my daughter would say. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I'll find some of that because if it's if I do, I'm in my element, man. That's what I'm talking about. So, yeah, even though this is a saltwater podcast, we're, we get off on the bad side a little bit every now and then, you know, because it's still fun. That's in my blood. That's what I started out doing when I was a kid, you know, it was – was catching them farm pond bass, man. It, it, it stuck with me, you know, and it kind of came back once I got back in the kayak, you know, and found out, oh, there's all kind of tournaments I could fish. And then it's just like, man, you really could do a tournament every weekend if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Looking at this list of dates here and then looking at the list of the, the, the Huck Bass Nation kayak series, the Hobie Bass Open series, the KBF Pro Tour, um, then the KBF Trail Series. Looking at all of that on top of all the other – local trails that I want to fish. I'm really, really staying cut and dry to the Southeast Texas trail. Like I did last year, even though I missed mm-hmm. some events, it didn't make the championship last year. Um, I was qualified and I was in the top 10 going into the final. Um, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for this year. If I can match that and get a couple good results, um, you know, it's got a vent on my home lake, got a vent on bass drop where I won an event there last year. Let's, let's let's hope I can enroll into this year on the bass side of things on a good note you know and then hopefully we'll uh we'll kick it off good with these good redfish you know we fished some we fished some new water last year um Mm -hmm. we explored some new spots over around me that i hadn't been in a while um and found some damn good fish too so it's just a matter of having the right conditions to get in there and uh we're gonna be on some fish man we're gonna be on some fish this year for sure sneak sneak back in some areas that that are hard to get to with a boat (laughs) (laughs) oh i'm excited excited for some of these redfish trails we're gonna see how it's gonna pan out and uh see how this year is gonna work out man i think it's gonna be pretty cool so um you know i know uh you know i've enjoyed fishing with you last year and uh these tournaments i'm gonna have to get uh get out there a little more this year pre-fishing you know absolutely i know that one tournament you came up we fished what three days in a row I slept on your couch. Yeah, you slept on my <laughs> couch for a couple of nights. And I think it's why <laughs> we fished three days in a row. Right. We fished three days, like three hard days, and then the tournament day. I mean, it was we fished all day long, every all three days. It was pretty cool. We we I, definitely I, found found some water. <laughs> we definitely yeah. covered some water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That's but, true. Uh, that was a good you know, time. Yeah, it's a good time, man. So, um, you know, looking at probably trying to wrap this up man uh you know i'm trying to go over my last minute preparations for tomorrow <laughs> yeah all that I'm, good stuff i'm going you know? to the marsh tomorrow so i still got to load up and get ready to rock yeah, yeah. you're gonna get and go man go out there and chase some more yeah. so um you know in closing up you know any 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 last minute things you know i like to say um as far as the you know new people hitting the water you know, if it's your first time out there and you're not familiar with the area, hit buddy system. Absolutely. Absolutely. You go with somebody else has been there or knows the area because in the marsh, it is very easy to get lost and get turned around back there. Mm-hmm. Very and easy. A lot, a lot of marshes, you don't have cell phone service either. No, you don't have no Google Maps, no nothing. Yeah, so if you don't have a fish finder with... Uh, like I got that little small one I'll carry with C maps on it and Navionics. If I don't have that, you know, sometimes you can get, you can get turned around. Um, if you're not familiar with the area right. or you get back somewhere and all the water's gone and you got to drag back out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, um, it, it, it's different making that choice to go back in and then yeah. realizing that you screwed up and said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to suck it up and, yeah. <laughs> and make it happen. In fact, oh, yeah. I, I was sending messages and, and, uh, you know, I, 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 I laugh and I make fun, but I always blame uh, Jared easily because yeah. uh, one of the first kayak trips I went out on was with him. And he uh, he told me, listen, this is high adventure kayaking back here. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, I'm not afraid to get dirty. You know, you don't you don't get afraid to get dirty anymore. And uh, yeah. you make those decisions. But if you're new, man, common sense, know the area don't put yourself in a dangerous situation buddy system have some communication even today today they sent out down to corpus at the jfk yeah. uh, 
Causeway, four kayakers got thrown out of the water, thrown out of their kayaks in 40 mile per hour winds. Man, there's, there's, Ooh, that's going a, out 40 miles an hour. Only reason I'm going out 40 mile an hour winds is if I'm in like a protected harbor. And I, yeah, that's, it, yeah. Yeah. Right. Not, not out in the open causeway. No. no. And, and, yeah, and remember, hammered over there. The rescuers got to go out there in that yes, same environment do. to go get you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it, it's a, yeah. a little bit of common sense, a little bit of, uh, uh Humility, be humble about it, and don't uh, <laughs> don't put yourself in a situation that that you could really get yourself or exactly think, hurt or killed. Ooh, I know, right on, man. That's some great tips right there for sure. A bug out bag goes a long way. Uh, you know, a towel, a dry set of clothes, um, a f- matches, a flare, uh, uh, some Tracy. kind of whistle. Yeah, something Tracy. in a in, in a dry bag and packed in a dry bag. Yeah, Tracy yeah. actually made a really good post about that. Uh, couple days ago we explained his bug his 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 overnight bag should yeah. he get pinned in in some place overnight he's got a bag and he laid out all the yeah. content that's Fantastic. uh tracy Debbin. he's uh, one of our uh hobie kayak uh, team members here in texas he travels around he goes over to florida for the stream kayak series and all that and uh you know well thinking about that in june there's that goat tournament in oh, the bear right. I, I think i want to go do that they said there's, there's a spot in the house i i'd like to go do that one but I don't know, man. I'm 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 already burning up some miles this year, so it's gonna be tough, <laughs> especially when I'm planning to go to Lacrosse, Wisconsin in August again. So, uh-huh. yep. <coughs> mm. So, that Thai food's getting to me right now. I had some had some waterfall salad and some, some stuff for dinner, bun bowl and some other stuff. Nice. It's like, uh, uh, I need nice. some water. I need some water. All right, dude. <laughs> hey, man. I appreciate cool. you coming on tonight. Um. Before we wrap up here, uh, you want to give a shout out to uh, any uh, sponsors or any anybody in particular? Well, obviously, uh, uh, Paddle and Finn. Thank you. They're they're rocking and rolling. Your, your side, the, the uh, chasing their side as well as uh, uh, as their bass side. Uh, fantastic podcasts. Um, you know, my people that support me, uh, Ravan Optics, Bison Coolers, Caden Lures, uh, Fishhide Sportswear. Salty Dog Hat Company, Texas Rattler, and uh, Anglers Anonymous. So I appreciate all of them. They make they make life easy for me and uh, open up some doors to get to enjoy some of this stuff. Yeah, and uh, social media, any plugs? Uh, where can everybody find you on there? Uh, Instagram, you really easy. Mad Fiorenzo. Um, we're not actually. I'm not angry. It's it's anagram for me, my wife, and my my kids. But it's a uh, Mad Fiorenzo on Instagram. You can find me there. Yep, find him on there. Mm-hmm. It's posting some good content, post some good catches and some good, you know, cast to catch on site casting redfish, some good pictures, a little fly fish action every now and then. Uh, yeah. Good to go. Hey, everybody out there, Jackson Kayak, you, y'all listening? This boy needs a kayak sponsor. Come on, <laughs> we're gonna try to hook him up. Uh, <laughs> gotta put him in cracking for y'all. Gotta keep hey, making cracking. So <laughs> I love paddling, but I tell you what, with this bass stuff going on and some other stuff, and heading out deeper water, you know. Uh, blue water stuff too offshore stuff uh paddle uh, pedal kayak is going to be in the in the in the cards very soon yeah yeah i got one i got one and i got a full kill on mine for the bass tournament so if i can use it in uh the kbf for the bass series i will use it uh, unfortunately at the hobie bass open on seminole i will not be able to use not be able to use it no yeah i'll be paddling through a bunch of hydrilla probably <laughs> i'll we'll swap that yeah, so, hey, man, uh, I appreciate you coming on tonight. You know, once again, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, thanks to all our show sponsors out there. Uh, I know it'll be in the out- intro and outro. I wish I had a list to thank everybody. Um, <laughs> I might need to start doing that. Uh, th- thanks to my sponsors. Thanks for supporting me, um, my time on the water. And, uh, man, I appreciate you coming on, and we'll, uh, thanks, I appreciate we'll wrap it. it up. Thanks for everybody turning, tuning in to Chasing the, Ki- Chasing the Tide saltwater segment on pal and finn i thank y'all for tuning in later go check out the website guys paddle the letter n and finn.com also check out youtube youtube.com forward slash paddle and finn if you got a question comment want to hear from a future guest feel free to email us at paddle the letter n and finn at gmail.com don't forget to 
Follow us on social media. We're doing giveaways, announcements, things like that at Facebook and Instagram at Paddle and Finn. Shout out to our show supporters, Rocktown Adventures, Loveland Canoe and Kayak, Hammered Lures, Fish Mob Lures, TRC Covers, Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com. You can put the Paddle and Finn logo right on your catch board. Don't forget to go over and pick up your Jig Masters jigs. Use promo code PNF20 and save 20% today. Don't forget to rate and review the podcast on whatever platform you're listening to. It helps grow the audience, helps others find our podcast. So please drop a five-star rating in on the podcast platform you're listening on. Don't forget about the Recycled Plastics program, you guys. Take your used plastic baits, put them in an envelope, mail them to the address in the show notes. Our man Eric Richards at Hammered Lures melts those down, makes new baits, and donates them to various chapters of Heroes on the Water.